now on 18 Eyewitness News. Our entire viewing area is under a heat advisory or excessive heat warning until Thursday. Two charges are dismissed against Clay Waller before he goes to court on Wednesday. Plus, backers are lining up behind Missouri's Republican U.S. Senate candidates. All of these stories, and will we see some rain by the weekend? Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins, and here are the top stories that we're working on for you at this hour. Every county in the 18 Eyewitness News viewing area is under a excessive heat warning or heat advisory until Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. Now, according to meteorologist Chris Knowles of the National Weather Service, the warning is issued when a prolonged period of heat and humidity is expected. What triggers the issuance of one is when we expect maximum afternoon heat index values to reach or exceed 105 degrees, uh, in this case for four or more consecutive days. Uh, the longevity is what concerned us, uh, and in addition to the fact that we'll see those high heat indices in the afternoon at night, there will be little relief as low temperatures will be in the mid to upper 70s. Noel says if folks have been outside, they should drink plenty of water and take frequent breaks. He says we can look for a little relief on Friday, but only a little. When I say cooler, that's a relative, <laughs> a relative cooler, just uh, you know, a few degrees lower than what we've seen. So, and the long-term pro uh, projections really do not paint a great picture. Uh, the kind of cycle that we're in is hard to break. So uh, we are expecting um, probably one or two more rounds of excessive heat this summer. Uh, but before we break uh, uh, out and head into the fall season. The excessive heat warning covers Bollinger, Butler, Carter, Ripley, and Wayne counties. Now the heat advisory covers Iron, Jefferson, Madison, Reynolds, St. Francis, St. Genevieve, and Washington counties. Well, speaking of the weather, Dustin Kopp is in our Storm Tracker Center. He's going to give us a look at our first forecast. Dustin? Good evening, Fred. Good evening, everybody. We saw another hot day here in southeast Missouri, and more hot weather is on the way. Current conditions through southeast Missouri, it's 100 right now in Festus, as well as in St. Genevieve and Fredertown, 98 in Cape Girardeau and Piedmont. Poplar Bluff coming in at 98 as well, as well as Van Buren and Ellington and Potosi, 99 degrees at the current time right now. And as we head through the evening hours, we're going to continue to be on the hot side. Partly sunny skies at 7 p.m., 98 degrees, 90 by 9 p.m., and partly cloudy at midnight with temperature around 84 degrees. And again, we are still under that heat advisory in the yellow. That's in effect until 7 p.m. on Thursday. The red is that excessive heat warning. That's also in effect until 7 p.m. on Thursday. I'll give you more details on the heat and is there any relief in sight? All those details coming up later in weather. A Cape Girardeau County prosecutor is expected to spell out the evidence against Clay Waller at his preliminary hearing on Wednesday. Waller is charged with first-degree murder in the death of his estranged wife, Jackie, who disappeared more than one year ago. Her body has never been found. It was also learned Monday that the theft and harassment charges against Waller have been dismissed. Waller was arrested in July 2011 on a harassment charge alleging he threatened to kill a man. He was also charged with felony stealing by deceit. Waller was accused of cheating a Cape Girardeau business out of $55,000. Authorities in Park Hills and Deloge are investigating reports of one or two men approaching children. Park Hills Detective Mike Kurtz says the first incident occurred Friday evening behind a local business. There's a white male, he's 5'8 to 5'10, 20 to 30 years old. He did not have a beard nor a mustache, but he was unshaven. Uh, his hair was short. <laughs> he exposed himself to two younger females. Kurtz says the girls did the right thing, screaming, running away, and telling their parents. He says a similar incident occurred Saturday afternoon in a different part of the city. Three girls were walking up an alleyway. They're younger girls, they're in their teens. And a white male, basically fitting the same description as the gentleman from the night before, 
did pretty much the same thing. He exposed himself to the girls, and then the girls did exactly what they're supposed to do. They ran, screamed, and immediately got a hold of their parents. The Park Hills reports were similar to an incident in Deloge Friday night. Police Chief James Bullock says a nine-year-old girl reported a male approached her and boy on South Harry Street, asking where a park was. The man then reportedly made a lewd offer to the girl. Bismarck Mayor Dennis Mayberry is warning drivers to slow down when you go through his town. Mayberry says speeders show no respect to the community or to its citizens. We're happy that we're a community where we want to raise our children, where we can we feel safe for them being outside. But when you've got trucks coming through this town 50 and 60 miles an hour because they know where the cops is, or you have people coming in our town that drive the same way, then they have no regard for, for our community or our children. Mayberry says both the police and police chief Dave Dickerson are concerned that a child or resident will be hit and killed by a speeding driver. The only thing, only recourse that we're left to do is to put the police off there at different times. And, you know, and, and this is not a speed trap by no means. This is just if we can just slow them down and do the speed limit, we'll be happy because we're not out there to, to make millions of dollars. That has nothing to do with anything. We are out there to protect the citizens of this community. Mayberry says the city will be putting up new signage to warn speeders. In addition, he says officers will be keeping a closer eye on Bismarck's four-way stop to catch people who drive through it. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, a number of politicians, conservatives, and business groups are endorsing Missouri's Republican U.S. Senate candidates. That story is coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. When you're looking for quality home furnishings, appliances, and more, look no further than Heartland Furniture and Appliance. Heartland Furniture and Appliance offers great low prices every day and six months same as cash financing. No hassle leasing and great customer service. With three locations to better serve you, the customer. In Donovan, Dexter, and Piedmont on both sides of Main Street. Heartland Furniture and Appliance. Sing a song about the Heartland. Take control of your future by enrolling at the Unitech Career Center. Discover a new career with Unitech's nursing programs or the opportunities with Unitech's sheet metal fabricating program. Or turn your hobby into a career with Unitech's power sports equipment program. From electrical trades to automotive technology programs, the first step to a well-paying future starts at the Unitech Career Center, Raider Road in Bonterre. For adult information, call 358-3011. For high school information, call 358-2271. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins, Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp, and Jeremy Martin with Sports. 18 Eyewitness News continues. With just two weeks before the August 7th primary, Republican U.S. Senate candidates are tooting their endorsements. Most recently, former Missouri Treasurer Sarah Steelman was endorsed by former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Steelman's also been endorsed by 47 State House representatives, including Stephen Tilley, Shelley Keeney, and Paul Fitzwater. Steelman says if she's elected to the U.S. Senate, she'll follow through on her promises. I will do what I say I'm going to do. And right now, I believe that the status quo has got to go. And that's where I will work as hard and put the best interests of the people first uh, if they elect me to the United States Senate. U.S. Representative Todd Aiken has received the endorsement of former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. A number of U.S. representatives are also backing Aiken, including former Republican presidential candidate Michelle Bachman. And looking ahead to November, Aiken says Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill should lose her job because she says one thing in Missouri 
and votes another way in Washington. The trouble is she should lose her job, not for what she says, it's what she does, okay? She has voted right along with Obama on Obamacare. 71% of Missouri voters are against socialized medicine and yet she's still plugging it. So it's not what she says, it's what she does. That's the problem. St. Louis businessman John Brunner is the Republicans' third major candidate. He boasts endorsements from Freedom Works and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Brunner has also been endorsed by U.S. Senators Tom Coburn of Oklahoma and Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. While politicians are typically looking for votes on the campaign trail, Reynolds County Sheriff Tom Volner found something else, a mobile meth lab. Volner was campaigning near Tubbs and 7th Street near Ellington High School Friday when he discovered a backpack lying in a wooded area. He noticed it held items using for making methamphetamines, including lye, lithium batteries, and coffee filters. There were several needles also in the backpack as well. Volner warns that shake-and-bake labs are typically made up of plastic bottles and household items. The chemicals inside the bottles can reignite, causing explosions or fires. In addition, the chemicals from a gas that is both corrosive to the lungs and toxic to the skin evolves. Sheriff Volner reminds citizens if they see a suspicious pack to contact his office immediately. Four teenagers are facing burglary charges in connection with an incident at Bernie High School Friday night. 19-year-old McKinley Lane, 18-year-old Marquise Meeky, 18-year-old Brandy Enderton, and 18-year-old Alyssa White are accused of entering the high school through an unlocked door on the roof. Bernie police say the teens went to a coach's office and stole some money. Authorities say the group has confessed to the crime, telling officers they were just cruising around town and needed some money and came up with the idea. The four are charged with second-degree burglary. Their cash-only bond has been set at $7,500. Well, still to come on 18 Eyewitness News, treating pregnant women for asthma flare-ups. We'll show you why some women aren't getting the care they need and how that could impact their babies. That's next in Your Health. More heat is on the way for Southeast Missouri. I have all the details coming up next in weather. When someone comes in a mental area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. We do have more heat on the way, but is there some relief in sight? Well, I'll tell you that in the seven day forecast. But right now, looking at weather headlines, we do have that heat advisory and excessive heat warning in effect through 7 p.m. on Thursday. Temperatures are going to continue to remain above normal through most of the end of the week, and possible thunderstorms are also going to be here at the end of the week as well. Here in southeast Missouri, it's on the hot side. 100 degrees in Festus and St. Genevieve. Fredertown right now at 100 degrees. 98 in Cape Girardeau and Piedmont and Poplar Bluff. 98 in Van Buren and 99 right now in Potosi. Here at Station, it's 101 with a partly sunny sky. Feels like 104 out there. Current dew point 66 with 32% humidity and a south-southwest wind at 10 miles per hour. Another hot day is expected for your day on Wednesday. A lot of hot weather pushing through and we're also going to see a lot of sunshine to go along with it. So for tonight, clear skies low around 75, 75 in Festus, 74 in St. Genevieve, as well as in Potosi and Ironton, Van Buren 72 and 75 in Poplar Bluff. Then for tomorrow, we'll see a high of 103, mostly sunny skies, 100s 
everywhere here in southeast Missouri. 104 in Festus, 104 in St. Genevieve, 102 in Ellington, Van Buren, and 101 as well as in Poplar Bluff. The next several days are looking like this through southeast Missouri. Chance of scattered thunderstorms on Thursday, high of 97. 98 on Friday with mostly sunny skies, mostly sunny on Saturday, high of 95, 98 on Sunday, 96 on Monday, partly sunny skies and partly sunny and 94 on Tuesday. Now look at our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri on Saturday, 95, low of 71 with mostly sunny skies, partly sunny on Sunday with a high of 98. That's checking your storm tracker weather forecast. More details are located at froggy96online.com. Just click on the weather tab. Fred, back to you. Thanks a lot, Dustin. About every 20 seconds or so, someone is rushed to an emergency room in this country because of an asthma attack. But not everyone is treated the same when they get there. Doctors are finding out that some pregnant women may not get the care they need, and it could impact not only the health of those women, but the health of their babies as well. Clark Powell has more. Jody Moore has known since she was 12 years old that she has asthma, but it wasn't until she was pregnant with her first child that it really began to take a serious toll on her health. The asthma just went crazy, and I, I had to call my doctor in the middle of the night. The asthma attacks lasted for weeks. It got so bad at times that Jody considered going to an emergency room for treatment, but a new study shows that may not always have helped. We found that in general, when pregnant women presented for treatment of their asthma attacks, at least with mild or moderate attacks, that they were treated differently than non-pregnant women. Dr. Jennifer McAllister is an expert in asthma at Ohio State University Medical Center. In a small but revealing study, she found that two out of three pregnant women who came to the emergency department for asthma flare-ups did not get the same treatment as non-pregnant women. Usually, doctors will give patients steroids to control their asthma, but in most pregnant women, that wasn't the case, and it led to even more problems. We actually found that in those women that were not treated as often with steroids that they tended to come back to the emergency department more often. Even though their only initial findings, McAllister believes this may be an issue in hospitals everywhere and wants to do larger studies to find out. In the meantime, Jody wants to make sure all women with asthma know the risks. I think for people who have asthma that say, oh, it's well controlled, I just pull out my inhaler every once in a while. You know, if you're going to get pregnant, think about it and maybe make sure your doctor is aware of the risks too because it, it came on pretty suddenly for me. At Ohio State University Medical Center, this is Clark Powell reporting. If asthma is not controlled, it can lead to complications in pregnancy like early labor and low birth weights. Researchers say the take-home message for doctors is that standard steroid therapies are safe for all women and should be given. If you have asthma and you want to be pregnant, talk to your doctor or an asthma specialist about your risks and treatment options. I'm Stacy Johnson. Dental insurance can certainly help take the bite out of dental bills. But unlike medical insurance, which is always necessary, is dental insurance the same way? Let's find out. Coming up on Money Talks News. Your health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy of Deloge, where caring for you and about you is our business. From taking time to explain your medication, offering a caring touch to a full line of medical equipment, supplies, and diabetic shoes. We'll help you understand your options and assist you with Medicare drug plan enrollment with a comfortable waiting area, convenient drive through or free delivery. Caring for our neighbors is our business. Your locally owned Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy, just off of Highway 67 at the Deloge exit. When you're recovering from a traumatic injury, the last thing you need is an unexpected bill. Because most health insurers pay only a part of air transport, Our Chair Medical has a solution, the Omni Advantage program. For a membership fee of $49 per year, Omni Advantage guarantees you and other covered family members will not have to pay anything that your health insurer doesn't provide. In an extraordinary emergency, the last thing you need to worry about is cost. Contact Our Chair Medical or visit them on the web to discover all the advantages of Omni Advantage. You know how important it is to have medical insurance, but you should have dental insurance as well. Money reporter Stacy Johnson has a few things you should know 
before you bite. There's a simple reason we all need health insurance, because very few of us have the money to handle a critical illness. But what about dental insurance? You know, it's not like health insurance, because here at the dentist office, it's not just your teeth that get capped, it's also your benefits. Most dental policies are capped at $1,000 to $1,500 a year, and unless your employer is paying the bill, you might pay $50 a month or $600 a year for the coverage. And even then, not everything's covered. A typical policy will pay for cleaning, but only pays for half the cost of fillings or pulling teeth and nothing for cosmetic treatments like teeth whitening. That explains why dental insurance isn't as critical or as popular as medical coverage. Should you brush it off? Now obviously, if your employer's paying for your dental coverage, fine, you got nothing to lose. But if you're paying it yourself, you're really going to have to weigh the cost benefit. One way to do that? Ask your dentist. And don't be surprised if you get an answer like this. Unless you're really getting it as a benefit from a big employer, it's really not worth it for an individual to buy it, no. Also keep in mind that most dental programs arise from things you can control. In other words, taking care of your teeth now is the way to save time, money, and pain later. There are also other ways to save on dental expenses that can take a big bite out of bills. We've got it all right here at MoneyTalksNews.com. I'm Stacy Johnson. And as Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to MoneyTalksNews.com. And coming up in sports, the Dodgers streak against the Cardinals continues. The St. Louis Rams are preparing as the regular season approaches, and Blues fans hand out their awards. These stories and more coming up in sports on 18 Eyewitness News. Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs, and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call 1-800-587-7095. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News with Jeremy Martin. Over the last two seasons, the Cardinals have not had any success against the Los Angeles Dodgers. That trend continued last night at Bush Stadium when the Dodgers beat the Cardinals for the eighth straight time, making an early lead stand up for a 5-3 victory. Although Cardinals rookie Joe Kelly pitched well, beat out an infield hit, and narrowly missed a home run, he still suffered his third loss in four decisions. Kelly worked six innings, allowing only two earned runs, making the 17th straight game in which the Cardinals starter had allowed two earned runs or fewer in the first six innings of a game. But the Cardinals were one for eight with runners in scoring position and dropped a season-high six games at a first place in the National League Central division. The two teams meet again tonight at 715. In less than one week, the St. Louis Rams will kick off their first full squad practice of the 2012 training camp. After a busy offseason in which the Rams turned over about half the roster and went from one of the oldest teams in the NFL to one of the youngest, their figures to be competition abound at nearly every position. New coach Jeff Fisher is a big proponent of that competition and with the next month full of padded practice opportunities and four preseason games, there's no doubt that Rams fans will have plenty to keep an eye on as the regular season nears. With that in mind, we'll take a look at some positions who will be vying for spots and what spots figure to be up for grabs in this year's camp. There's no quarterback controversy as Sam Bradford is the starter and Jeff Fisher and his staff is expecting good things from him in his third NFL season. While there's no doubt who rules the roost at running back as Steven Jackson returns for his ninth NFL 
NFL season, there are five pure rookies behind him. Heading the list is Isaiah Pede, who as a second-round pick will get work as Jackson's backup and figures in the mix in the return game as well. Tomorrow, we'll look at the competition for wide receivers and tight ends. And after thousands of votes were submitted, the winners in the fourth annual St. Louis Blues Fan Choice Awards have been announced. The team MVP is David Backus, with Alex Petrangelo as runner-up. Backus was also selected best forward ahead of Andy McDonald. The Best Defensive Man Award went to Alex Petrangelo, with Barrett Jackman as runner-up. And the most popular award went to TJ Oshie ahead of Backus. This was Oshie's fourth consecutive win in this category, making him the only Blues player ever to win the most popular title in the Blues Fan Choice Awards. Fans submitted their votes through the team's website at stlouisblues.com. And that's a look at sports. Fred and Dustin, back over to you. Another hot day across the heartland, but uh, some good news over in the city of Leadwood. Their boil water order has been canceled. Has been canceled. You can now drink your water without having to boil it, so that's a, that's a good sign. And, uh, you know, don't use too much water because it's hot out there and there's, the water supply is still on the low side it for is. most areas so because we haven't seen much of the way of rainfall but there is some good news in sight there maybe is some showers and thunderstorms towards the end of the week let's take a look at that Great seven day forecast shall we and look at the seven day forecast 103 tomorrow fred with mostly sunny skies we do have scattered showers and thunderstorms likely on thursday 97 degrees but the way they've been popping up here and there and not popping up here and there i'm not going to hold my breath too much until we actually see the rainfall. But uh, on Friday, 98 degrees, mostly sunny, mostly sunny on Saturday, 95, and then we're back to 98 on Sunday, and then cooling down just a bit for next week. You know, we did a story here uh, with one of the uh, chief meteorologists from the Weather Service, and uh, he's telling us that uh, we'll probably have another two good spells of really, really intense hot weather before mm -hmm. fall of the year hits. Yeah, and the outlook for the the drought conditions and the how much rainfall that we aren't going to see is through october and mm -hmm. they're saying that we're going to be above normal for not seeing right. that much moisture so i guess below normal on the mo moisture side but above normal on the temperature side so mm. let's just be prepared as mm. i said last week in the last couple of days let's maybe hope for a bad winter but you know a lot of people are killing me for that one so We'll, we'll just have, have to, to wait see. And see. All right, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you tonight at 10 o'clock with more. Until then, have a blessed evening and God bless everyone. Have a good evening, everybody. News Watch is next. We'll see you tonight at 10. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv. Here's what's coming up tonight on KDKZ 18.